G'day, I'm Ash, I hope you're all doing fantastically well. Welcome to the dev server, this is 1.97 Viking Fury, and as per normal, I've got to say this, everything is subject to change and not final. With that out the way, let's fuck off and get into the aircraft. Today we'll be covering the aircraft as well as the helicopters. We're taking a look at aircraft model and damage model and characteristic weaponry changes from what we've observed. Uh, the data mines haven't come out as of recording this just yet, so we don't know all the juicy details, but there is a selection of aircraft uh, to go for. USA has two. The F-4E Phantom II and the A-4B. Now, I believe it's a Skyhawk uh, and a Wish. This is my request. Anyone who's watching this and is a skin uh, or a skinner, I'd like a, a Royal Australian Navy skin for this Skyhawk, please. It'd be utterly fantastic. Although we didn't use the fuel probe, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter. This thing is utterly gorgeous. And it is a subsonic jet. It does sit at battle rating 8.7. It is rank 6. It's got two 20mm Mark 11 cannons with only 200 rounds, so 100 rounds per gun. And they are mounted in a very peculiar position here, sort of just outboard on the inner side of the wings, which is, well, I, I guess it's better than having it directly under the fuselage here, where the, well, the landing gear is currently. In terms of X-ray, got one pilot. It's made basically made out of fuel tanks. As you can see, the guns are sort of in line here. The, uh, the control surfaces and that uh, run directly underneath the pilot and underneath the self-sealing fuel tank. And then the wings are just primarily fuel tanks with uh, wing spars structured around those fuel tanks. Let's have a look at the modifications really quickly. AIM-9Bs uh, are the air-to-air -air missiles. Then you can also put bullpups, uh, the Mighty Mouse missiles as well if you really want to. Uh, the Zuni Mark 32 uh, HVARs with a different ordnance loadouts, particularly with bombs, etc., etc. The most common loadout will probably be a cannon times one and AIM-9 uh, times, you know, exactly this. Just look at that gun bod underneath that. Isn't that just spectacular? Other than that, it can do a 1,090 kilometers an hour, uh, and well, as subsonic jets go, I think this thing will be pretty all right at 8.7, although there is an interesting change. It is sitting above the FJ-4B, so they've bumped the FJ-4B up to 8.7, they've put it at the uh, A4 just above it, which is an odd choice, but I can understand that. Anyway, moving on to the F4E Phantom. So, why a new F4 Phantom? Well, this one has a particularly interesting modifications. Yes, it's got AIM-9 uh, J Sidewinder air-to-air missiles. You can mount four of them, which have an increased uh, range of lock-on, and I believe a slightly better tracking. They are rear aspect, though, but they are infrared, so that's particularly cool. But this aircraft is equipped with flares or countermeasures. It is a modification you will have to unlock, however, and, well, again, it's going to be particularly interesting to see how these work, but the previous model, if we go and have a look at the modifications currently, it doesn't necessarily have uh, countermeasures at all. We go over here, it doesn't have any countermeasures, it doesn't have the later version of AIM-9s, but what they did add to the previous uh, F4 Phantom, the C version, was the radar warning receiver. So there is a little bit of a difference there. Aside from that, I don't know the details of the ordnance loadouts between the two. I really don't focus on those because I'm not really playing ground forces. And when I am playing top tier jets, which is not very often, unless I'm playing at 8.7, not 10.3, I mostly prefer to stick to air-to-air -air missiles just because, well, War Thunder tends to be a team deathmatch kind of game rather than a combined arms. Germany gets one aircraft this patch. This is the Junkers uh, 188A2. It's got two 20mm turrets uh, and obviously a lot of machine guns. Now it's got a, a rear gunner with two 7.2mm machine guns and a 13mm machine gun as well. The two cannons, one mounted forward, one mounted on the rear here. Unfortunately, it is, well, it, it's, a, it's a bomber and there's not really much to say about bombers. As you can see here, the 13mm machine gun here and then the 20 on the top, that's really its only sort of interesting feature, I guess. But it's so crammed packed. I can see this thing being useful for uh, realistic battles in terms of, uh, well, it's, it's ground forces capability. Because look, you can pack a Satan and an 1,000 pound bomb, so say goodbye to any buildings and rip anyone's frame rates. It's no PE-8 though. Uh, and the other thing too, let's have a look. This is something that particularly interested me. You have a look at the X-ray. 
It's just fuel for days in the wings, and it is just an absolute pea pod. If you're just shooting fish in a barrel inside this sort of area over here, it is cramped. It's like a jungle gym in there. Unfortunately, it is a bomber, and I really don't have much else to say about it. So yeah, that's the Junkers 188A2. A passing word of mention goes to the F-100. This is China's new jet. Not really much to say about it. It's exactly identical to all the other F-100s we have in-game, and is basically the earliest model possible. It does have AIM-9Bs. That's really it. It's just a stock standard vehicle. So if you like copy pasta, well, there you go. There's a jet for you. All right, let's move on again. This is the Electric Lightning F6. It's a rank 6, but a running 10.0 uh, air vehicle. And those of you who are fans of British aviation, well, here she is. Here she is. Finally, she's here. I'm excited because this is an absolute monster of a unit. And while it is definitely fun to sort of have a look at, uh, I don't know. She's going to have problems turning, but that's okay. She's an interceptor, not necessarily a turn fighter. X-Ray is utterly gorgeous with the two engines stacked on top of each other with the fuel tanks in the wings, the double lined, uh, you know, wing spars in here with the traction control uh, services and things. Obviously, there's a radar in the nose cone. And yes, this thing does come equipped with radar. It doesn't come with uh, flares, which is something that I'd expect it to. Uh, it does get access to fire streaks, for those of you who enjoy those particular air to -air missiles. And obviously the red tops. Now, the red tops differ from the fire streaks in the fact that they've got two kilometers extra lock-on range. So, historically, I believe the missiles in further development did get to a stage where the red tops could go to about 12 kilometers lock-on, which is particularly interesting. And compare the, well, the TNT, or the mass kilogram uh, explosive, the maximum uh, TNT explosive mass is 22 for the fire streaks, and on the well, the red tips, they are 31. So there's that. Also, the maximum overload is 16 uh, Gs, and you're not going to be pulling 16 Gs with those. Well, compare that to fire streaks, 13. So this is going to be a major upgrade for Britain's aviation. Hopefully these missiles make it worth it, and we're, there's not really much in terms of armour. There should be a bulletproof panel on the front of the cockpit, uh, but that's really it. Passing in mention is the Japanese Phantom 2, or... Passing in mention is the F4EJ Phantom 2. This is the Japanese version of the Phantom. We have no idea where that other Phantom that was announced for the, I believe it was the, the other version, the, the Kai, uh, the EJ Kai version. I believe that's what it was called. There was an announcement that was posted to the Japanese Twitter for the Japanese version of War Thunder, which had a different version of what we, than what we currently see. So that probably could come in a later update. But regardless, this is the version that we have currently, which makes sense, I guess. This thing does come with flares. It does come with the AIM-9Js, uh, the Sidewinders, and there are four of them. And it also comes with a standard stock loadout. I'm not a fan of the camouflage, and I do wish that in future there'd be more uh, versions and, and different other bits and pieces available. Probably be some stuff on the market at some point. But that's basically it. That is another Phantom. And I really have a soft spot for the Japanese Phantoms. Being, you know, having such a long service life, only being retired uh, last year in 2019. This is the J-35D. Yes, it's the Draken. It's one of the most sexy, gorgeous-looking aircraft uh, that we have currently in War Thunder. And this sort of sets the stage for what other aircraft we have. And my goodness, it is one hell of a unit. It's even got a little tail, a separate, like, tail-dragging aircraft uh, thing. I believe it can get, land on carriers. I'm not entirely sure here. I don't know much about modern jets. You know, most of my knowledge goes to about 1955, and then it just sort of stops. And I really need to learn more about, oh, just, oh, that is just something to behold. It is a work of art. They've done a good job with this one. It is absolutely fantastic, with the 30mm cannons just jutting off the sort of the leading edge of the Delta Wing here, with 180 rounds of cannon and four air-to-air -air missiles that are the same as what you can get on the J-32B. This thing is going to be an absolute monster. However, it is prone to ripping, and we'll probably discover this in a separate video at some point. May even go over some of the aircraft I really like, uh, but yeah, it's an absolute monster. Armor, there is no armor protection. X-ray, it is, it's just, it's just a work of art. Everything is laid out so neatly and organized. Let's have a look at the modifications real quick. It can come with the standard air targets, ground targets, and stealth. 
but you can also get uh, you know two air-to-air -air missiles and a bunch of other ground pounding units if we have a look over right under here so are these uh, missiles and rockets goes you know that's pretty substandard but what a beast i remember playing this in several other different games but it's good to see it in war thunder and that's that all right so let's take a look at the russian helicopters there's two of them before we take a look at the two helicopters which are coming to the game, uh, let's go over some of the aircraft damage model and characteristic and weaponry changes. For all air-to-air -air missiles, launch range has been changed to real values at low altitudes and reduced about 25 to 30%. Cloud cover now reduces the target capture for infrared and laser and homing sensors. Fantastic, that means we won't be able to shoot through pesky clouds. The Air 4 c has a modular uh, received, as we went over before, the uh, radar warning system. The, a bunch of other changes went to helicopters. Aircraft cannons, the GSH-30, the NR-30, and the N-37. Uh, recoil when firing has been decreased. And, uh, well, you can read about the other things in the patch notes, which will be linked in the, uh, the comments or in the description down below. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the aircraft first. Uh, this is the Ki-29, and for fans of you who play Cold Waters, this will probably be your bane or your worst nightmare. What this aircraft is, it's a naval helicopter. Essentially very good, very small, and it's dual rotor. It's an absolutely funky looking machine. It's capable of dropping depth sonar uh, charges into the water, allowing... Now, I'll be really honest here. I really do not like helicopters in War Thunder. I think they are an absolute plague, but that's just my opinion. I'll be honest here, I really don't want to have a look at the modifications for this thing. It's just another helicopter. It's got another options. It can come with night vision. The only really interesting thing is we go right up and, and have a look in this particular grill. There's a machine gun coming out of the bow there, which can be manned by that particular gunner there, but that's that's really it. It can come with standard missiles that come with uh, Russian things. Nothing too overpowered. Well, speaking of overpowered, we can take a look at the newest addition to Overpowered Thunder. Yeah, the KA-50 wasn't enough, huh? So here we go, KA-52, and you can unlock this one in, in, the, in the tech tree now. Hooray! Does it come with the same uh, uh, overpowered missiles that can do 8 kilometers range? Who knows? Who the fuck cares? I don't like helicopters, and if I want to go play helicopters, I'll go fly an Armour 3, or I'll go do DCS or something else. This is utterly bullshit. This is a Rank 7. I believe it says Rank 7. Yeah, it's a Rank 7 helicopter and a 10.0. <laughs> it's basically the same. Now, it's essentially the same as a K-50, but it has more ordnance loadouts. That's literally the only difference. I don't know what those differences are. I haven't done my homework. I could give two shits about helicopters, and that's my honest opinion. So there you are. That's all the changes. Uh, we will take a look at some other things in a couple of videos soon. Otherwise, this is probably going to be my final dev server video, and probably one of the final, and I mean final, War Thunder videos that I'm going to be doing. Uh, so, you know... Hit like, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. All right, see you in a uh, in a hot minute. Bye bye.